Um, what I'd like to share with you this morning is an excerpt from a keynote I do about managing it all, about avoiding burnout, work-life balance, if you will. And, and I, I love to teach from metaphors and analogies because you get to bring where you are to the story, uh, whether it's I'm talking about leadership and leading like a gardener or what I'll be talking about today. So thrilled to be with you and let's get started about the struggle of too much to do. Now I'd like to start today by asking you a question. And that question very simply is, in your drive to get it all done, what's not getting done? In your drive to get it all done, what's not getting done? For some of you, you would say to me, Jones, it's the strategic stuff at work. You know, I'm putting out fires all day in my job and, and I'm taking care of what's right in front of me, but I know that I'm not getting to where I need to be in six months or one year. So that's my struggle right now. That's what's not getting done. For some of you, you would say to me, it's the relationships. You know, I've got a family, Jones, but I feel like I'm neglecting them. You know, I've got people at work that I hardly know. We're back in the office now, and, and I, I don't feel, really feel like I know what's happened to them in the past 18 months. And so, so Jones, I kind of feel like, for me, it's relationships. And for some of you, you would say, Jones, when I think about what's not getting done or getting done well, it's me time. Like the person who said to me a few months ago, Jones, I'd like to be able to sit on my couch for 30 minutes, do nothing, and not feel guilty about it. What's not getting done? And isn't that ironic in that, that you're so busy, we're all so busy, but yet we can identify things that aren't happening in our work or life that are important to us. I call that condition juggling elephants. Juggling elephants. The whole fact that, that we are trying to get it all done, but we just can't seem to figure out how. The reality is, is that we can't get it all done, can we? If we had 36 hours in a case of Red Bull, we still couldn't get everything done that we wanted to get done in the day. So, so what are we to do? Just give up? Give up on building that team member because we just don't have the time? Give up on building stronger relationships with our families because we just can't seem to find the space in our day? And are we just to say, well, I'm not important? And then suffer through day after day of going, I just wish it was different. Doesn't sound like a winning solution to me. My solution or my suggestion for you is that yes, as you saw on the screen a moment ago, that you need to run off and join the circus. Not physically, okay? We're talking mentally here. That you need to begin to look at your work and life like it's a circus. Now in order to do that, I think it's important to begin to get that picture, if you will. So think about your most vivid image or thought about the circus for a moment. For some of you, it's the, the bright colors as the, the acts begin to unfold. For some of you, it's the sound of calliope music playing in the background. For some of you, it's the smell of sawdust and elephant poop, okay? But get that picture. And while you've got that picture, let me share with you one way I think that, that the circus can teach us a whole lot about how to manage the struggle of too much to do. Think about the flow of a circus lineup, if you will, for a moment. If you go to the circus, there's an act that will show up in one ring. And then while that act's performing, the ringmaster will step to another ring and maybe introduce that act, or maybe it'll just start happening. Pretty soon, there's another act happening in another ring, and it's just a smooth, steady flow of activity throughout the performance. Sounds just like your day, right? You're going, that's a bad joke, Jones. My day looks more like this. I start my day going, yeah, I really want to focus on this because this is really important right now. Before I can get it done, oh, I get dragged over to this ring. Now I've got to work on this. And just before I make some real progress, oh, I got a notification on my phone. So now I'm focusing mentally over here. And I'd really like to be over there, but now I got to be back over here. And you just spend your day jumping from one thing to another. You go home in the evening and you say, I was so busy all day, but I don't feel like I accomplished anything of value. The circus teaches us that there's incredible opportunity if we will simply begin to plan our days a little differently. We'll get to that in just a moment. 
There's something else I think the circus analogy can teach us as well. You know, right now, I've, I've got you in kind of a bad place. I, I've shared with you, think about all the things you're not getting done. Think about all the things you wish you were doing. You're like, aren't you supposed to be making me feel better? Well, let's do that. You see, the circus also has an audience, doesn't it? And in a successful circus, there are people clapping and cheering, going, woohoo! Maybe not with that North Carolina accent, but, but they're clapping and cheering and going, wow, this is the greatest thing we've ever seen. And it causes the performers to get more excited about doing their job because they know the crowd is approving of them. Here's what I'm going to ask you to do in just a moment. I want you to turn to someone around you, and I want you to tell them, someone in your circus audience, Somebody who has expectations of you, whether it's at work or at home, but somebody in your, your circus audience that right now would be giving you a standing ovation. Who's pleased with the work that you're doing right now? Who's a family member that says, yeah, thank you. You're doing a great job. And I want you to take about 30 seconds with someone around you to share who that person or persons are in your life. And I'll let you know when 30 seconds is up. So go. Okay, our train of thought is getting ready to move to another station. <laughs> Jokes only get worse as the morning goes on. Um, all right, I'd love to hear, not by name necessarily, but by role in your life. Somebody over here, just tell me, who's someone in your circus who's pleased with your performance right now? Just yell it out. Your mom. Beautiful. Isn't that great? Okay, somebody in the middle section. Who's someone in your circus who's pleased with your performance? Husband. That person will always be able to say marriage is grand. They will hopefully never have to say divorce is 10 grand. <laughs> I know the numbers are too low, but anyway. All right, so somebody in this group. Mom. Your mom, another mom. Isn't that beautiful? Now, if you don't remember anything else I say in my time with you this morning, I want you to remember what you just did. Because too often we just keep beating ourselves up for all the things that aren't getting done. And we don't stop and celebrate the things we are getting done the people we're connecting with, the impact we're having. So I hope you'll keep that in mind the next time you go, oh, I feel like I'm juggling elephants like that crazy guy said. Take a moment and go, who in my circus audience is cheering and clapping for me? Now, if we're gonna look at our work and life like a circus, then of course, we gotta take it to the next level. And that next level includes being a better ringmaster of our circus, okay? Uh, now, just by show of hands, how many of you in here would say that you are the ringmaster of your circus? Raise your hand. Yeah. yeah, now, some of you aren't raising your hand. I know it's not for the reason it was a few months ago. I was at a conference, and uh, there was a couple sitting down front. And I said, how many of you say you're the ringmaster of your circus? The husband raised his hand, his wife looked at him, and he put it down. <laughs> So I know that's not what's going on. Some of you are saying, Jones, I'm not in control of everything. Yeah, but neither is a ringmaster. Ringmaster knows where they can have input and influence, but they're not in control of the animal trainer. They're not in control of the people selling the popcorn and the peanuts and other things. The ringmaster says, where can I have greater impact so that the circus is successful? And I think that's the question for you. Now, if you're the ring master, you've got to be the ring master of something. Let me share with you what I think your three rings are, okay? And here they are on the screen. you got a work ring, a self ring, and you got a relationship ring. Now, let's take a quick poll here for a moment. How many of you in this room would say of these three rings, your work ring is most important? Raise your hand. No new hires in the room? Okay. <laughs> All right, two. I'll tell you, thank you. All right. How many of you say your self ring is most important? Raise your hand. How many say your relationship ring is most important? Wow. Who's right? All of you. Yeah. See, the circus teaches us that all three rings are important. And that if we neglect one of these rings, 
it impacts our ability to perform well in the other two. So those of you earlier who were thinking about something that, that you're not getting done at work, don't tell me that doesn't affect you when you go home and spend time with your family or when you're thinking about how successful you are. For those of you who are not taking time for yourself, you may be denying it right now, but you know that's making you less attentive to the team members that depend on you so much for guidance and direction and development because you're not taking care of yourself. Now, we may not be able to agree on which one of these three rings is most important, but I bet we could all be in unison about another question, and that one simply is, which ring do we neglect most often? Self, yeah, self ring. So if you're wanting to improve your performance at work, maybe it's not working more hours. Maybe it's taking better care of yourself. As you begin to get this awareness of, okay, Jones, I begin to see where I need to be spending my time in certain rings, if you will, then maybe the next um, thing that you need to do is think about what does my lineup need to look like? What does my lineup need to look like? Imagine this. Imagine you've got a circus and you're the ringmaster and you're getting ready to, to create this great performance and you say, okay, I've got 17 acts. I want all of you just to stay over there and I'll figure out when you're going to happen sometime later today. <laughs> It'd never work, would it? Isn't that what we do though? When we make a task list of maybe 17, 18, 37, 57 things and we just kind of slide it over here and then we just kind of haphazardly go, oh, I think I'll do that one now. Or, oh, I think I'll work on that one. And then we wonder why we're not getting our most important things done. The circus knows that you've got to plan every moment, not just for the things you have to do, but the things you want to do. And when you do that, at the end of the day, you start going, wow, my performance went much better today. A key part of, of making that performance better, that we can glean another idea from the circus, relates to, to something else. Imagine someone is watching you go through your work day and they were to ask you the question, how do you know when you need to take a break at work? How would you answer them? You'd probably say, oh, when I lose my focus. <laughs> uh, some of you'd say, when I snap at a coworker, kind of like somebody did one day, I was asking that question and somebody, I said, how do you know you need to take a break from work? And the person said, well, when I get crabby and the person next to him said, er, <laughs> Okay. Um, but you know, if you think about that for a moment, we don't take breaks until something breaks. And the challenge with that is that we've usually wasted time. The ringmaster of the circus would say, you know what? That's a lousy way to run your day. Because in the circus, we take strategic stops and we refresh our energy of the performers. We let the ringmaster have a break. It even gives the audience a chance to reflect. And when we do that, we're much more effective in our next half. I think Leonardo da Vinci said it best. Every now and then go away and have a little relaxation. To remain constantly at work will diminish your judgment. Go some distance away because work will be in perspective and a lack of harmony is more readily seen. So what is there left to say? I've given you a way to, to look at your, your struggle of too much to do in a fresh way. I, I've given you a way to understand how to take more conscious control of all the areas of your life so more of your most important things can get done. And, and hopefully I've given you an, a way of a strategically stopping to be able to continue that productivity throughout your entire day. What's left to say? May all my days be circus days. Thank you for letting me be with you this morning.